My friends, in recent years, thoughtful people from all walks of life have become increasingly concerned with preserving and protecting our natural environment. You know, there was a time when only a few scientists, for the most part, expressed this concern. Now we are being forced to change our way of thinking. If this earth is to take care of us and our children, then we must learn to take care of the earth. Air pollution, water pollution, soil pollution are no longer just topics of discussion in the classroom. They are here and now issues of daily life that cannot and will not, we cannot afford to live without. But what about our spiritual environment? Is that not equally as important? What is the advantage of a neat and clean world if our hearts are polluted, that we can't live with ourselves or with our neighbors? And that is exactly what Jesus is talking about in today's gospel. This washing that Jesus and the Pharisees were talking about had nothing to do with personal hygiene, but it had to do with religious ceremony. Jesus tried to get them to understand that the wrongness in their lives had to do with the condition of their heart. Sin had not entered from without. It had originated right there within themselves. He said, all these evils come from within and render a person impure. Now that concept may not be very comforting to us, but it does offer several advantages. For one thing, it isolates the problem. At least we know where spiritual pollution comes from. All we have to do is look right here within ourselves. And the logical place for every person is to start right here in one's own heart. Correct wrong attitudes. Stop the flow of unkind words. Repent of evil done and the good left undone. I think the second thing it does is it eliminates the excuses. You know, many people uh, look upon society as a living organism, really apart from oneself. And the problem with such reasoning is that society is nothing more than a group of people. And everything that is wrong with society is simply an accumulation of what is wrong with the people within that society. And finally, I think this implies a solution. Nothing magic, nothing easy, but something really quite simple. The only real remedy to the problem of spiritual pollution is for every person to clean up his or her own life. Whatever anyone else in this world may choose to do, you and I can still breathe the clean air of forgiveness and drink the clean water of life. We do not have to live lives of spiritual pollution. We can handle that, whatever the problem may be, with the help of God.